Ready our first talk. We have Bella Chapman with Hungry Hungry Pony, East of Ie Island Green Turtle, Chelonian Mayabes, um, Diet Determination Utilizing Stable Isotopes, Delta 13C and uh, 15. I'm going to turn over to Bella. Hi. 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 So first off, what I'm going to be talking about is just a brief introduction of the actual stable isotope that I used in my projects, and also um, what the line being is and what my research question is. I'm so sorry. I just have to share the screen. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with our technical difficulties. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> okay, so, oh, sorry. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> so, carbon 13 and nitrogen 15 were the isotopes that I was utilizing in my study. Um, these uh, isotopes have been used since the late 1970s as a way to provide a map of what animals of um, As animals progress throughout their life, they are consuming different forms of organic matter, which have different amounts of nutrients within their systems. Uh, as their life goes on, these deposition is possible to be as a way to identify the, what they are feeding at on the back of organisms and also on the level of fertility chain. So delta-13 carbon is a ratio of carbon-13 and carbon-12, while delta-15 nitrogen is nitrogen-15 and nitrogen-14. And together, those are the ones we use for that side of the bio. Try again. There we go. <laughs> so delta carbon-13 is the one that we use to identify what the primary producers are that are being consumed. And that is because this form of carbon remains unchanged throughout the trophic food level. So we are able to identify where that is going to be. However, nitrogen is a different uh, form that is able to be enriched in the organism on different levels of the food chain. And as the nitrogen 14, which is the lighter isotope, is excreted through bodily functions. It leaves the heavier nitrogen 15 isotope remaining within the body. This leads us to the Hawaiian green sea turtle, uh, which is the species that I give emphasis on. These turtles spend the first three to five years of their life um, out in the open ocean where they act as opportunistic feeders consuming anything they can basically fit in their mouths. After this three to five year period, however, they transition into a coastal environment where they then start feeding on algae and other birds as well as us. We know here in Hawaii that these turtles feed primarily on macro algae, but they also feed on seagrass and when it is available for their consumption. There have also been reports of other forms of plant material, such as terrestrial tree leaves, different forms of lantern, such as drafts, and just incidental invertebrates uh, being consumed by these animals. Uh, we also know that they will opportunistically take high protein feeding opportunities as well, such as like feed off the fish and such as wind. So this leads us to the actual turtles uh, that do look funny. Uh, there were 17 turtles that were used in the study that were spent each one of the shows from March 2020 to June 2022. And after retrieval of these uh, carcasses, they were then uh, kept here on campus frozen until they were eventually transported to a walk for the talk to be conducted in August of 2022. Um, once these autopsies were conducted, 
Uh, skin samples were taken from the uh, rear hind flippers of these turtles, and then were sent back to the university for the university. This leads to what the purpose and question for my study was, which is what we wanted to know what food animals were eating throughout their lives up until the point of scramble. Um, and to do that, we utilized stable isotope analysis to understand what they were eating. So there was two primary portions for my methods, which was just mapping out the locations of the information given to us by the stranding network, and then the actual skin sample processing. So these turtles stranded at eight separate locations here on the east coast of Hawaii, uh, which were in the Lilipolani Park and Gardens, Bokuola, also known as Coconut Island, um, Onipaha Beach Park, a singular private residence, Hulu Black Sand Beach, Reeves Bay, Richardson's Ocean Park, and finally the Wailua River State. After I retrieved the skin samples, however, I first started by sorting and labeling them based on the location where they stranded before rinsing them with the ionizer. I then recorded the weights, which I wrote down as wet weights, before they were placed in aluminum weight boats and then dried in the oven. These samples were dried at 60 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 24 hours before I began to process them. I first ground them by hand with uh, mortar and pestle. However, due to the nature of some of these skin samples, uh, we did have to result to using a little bug grinding mill to just kind of break them down because some of them are very tough. Um, after the grinding was complete, we then returned them to weigh boats and we kept them stored in the oven to prevent the hydration of the skin samples. After all the samples were completed, then I then loaded them into one milligram to the capsules, uh, canisters before sending them to the UH Hulu analytical lab for analysis of the isotope. That brings me into what the results of those compounds were. As you can see here, the delta 13 carbon had an average value of a negative 15.9. And the values range from around negative 14.3 to negative 18.0. There is also a standard deviation of the samples found being of 1.55. The delta 15 nitrogen, however, had an average of an 18.63 and had values ranging from 6.2 to 11.9. These, uh, the delta 15 nitrogen had a standard deviation of 1.5. The turtles here have found where the turtles with the highest and lowest values found of delta carbon 13. As you can see, turtle H80 um, had the highest, oh, sorry, had the lowest value, uh, which came from Richardson's Ocean Park, while the turtle with the lowest value came from Richardson's uh, and had a negative. Um, these turtles, again, had the highest and lowest values of delta, delta 15 nitrogen um, and had a high of 11.9. And this turtle came from Mokuola, while the turtle H354 had a lower value of 6.2 and came from the circulation. So what do those values mean? Essentially, those indicate all points in the turtles being a primary consumer and they feed on a plant-based diet. We know that based off the low values here, they are acting as primary consumers, and the delta-13 carbon values were consistent with literature values reported on red, brown, and green algae. Because sea turtles are endangered species, the implications of the study means that it is critical for us to be protecting the blue patches so that they are able to continue consuming what they need to go. There are still, however, a lot of future research opportunities, um, both directly relating to the 17 turtles that I was able to use, and also for future sampling of other turtle populations, both here on East Hawaii and throughout the island chain. I would like to thank all of my assistants here, um, such as my advisors, Carla McDermott and Mark Laws. And also all of the staff here at the Chilo and Seven Friends and Family do like continue to help support me as well. I just do this project. We will not be going to talk to any questions.
Which means they, the Hawaiian seafood was to eat seagrass. Yes. Yeah, so in Hawaii, there are less amounts of seagrass around. Um, it's more commonly found that I saw in the literature on areas of like Oahu and Maui, uh, the seagrasses were. But we know still, even though that's primarily algae based on this island. Since the turtles travel, there's still possibilities that they are going between these islands. Like, the so consider that. It's just that seagrass. Yeah, and towers. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking on the turtle movie, of sea fish, how far, what sort of slicing time is represented in the right? Sorry, can you repeat that? So, the skin, you know, it's being regenerated through time. Yeah. And so your sample is representing a fixed amount of time for expanding that. Yeah. Do you have any idea how long that time is? Is it if it's means that your sample is representative, or is it something that's maybe just random for what you might be compared to how to that is a really good question. I did not look at that when I was doing my study. Um, I will look at that for future reference, um, but I believe, at least for like the skin samples, since it is a regenerative uh, property of the skin, it technically has a shorter amount of time than, say, bone density values and such, which are like a whole lifelong process. But I'd have to double check my uh, research uh, with that. Any other questions? I guess I've got one for you. So, you know, is there is there any indication of a or how would you go about studying the sea turtles' health based on you know these different ratios of limo or other aspects of their diet? If you were going to like do further research on this, how would you associate? What would you look for to determine? Health in the sea turtles? Like, if, is there any visible signs that you can just from observing? And how would you associate that with what's in their diet? So, I'm not sure if the actual isotope composition has an effect to the overall health of the animal, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. Um, there are visual signs of turtles based on their plastron, so the underside of their belly. Um, you can physically tell, like, the state of body condition, you can like tell when they're like emaciated and such because it does sink in. So if for example they were consistently like emaciated turtles and you like looked at their you know diet composition and maybe they they were you know, algae, you could possibly look at like their population of algae within in that area to discover maybe that there's just reduced amounts of food or if there was something like along that aspect that would be causing the emaciated body condition and stuff. Um, but I'm not sure if there is any correlation between the actual positive competition women with the animal and their actual health. Yes. 